Every handful of soil contains billions of organisms. Each of them is playing a different role in the system. The thought that one of these tiny organisms could hold the solution to this massive problem, that in itself is mind blowing. So picture this, these tiny microbes living on the seed and then growing in the roots of the plant. The plants suck CO2 out of the atmosphere and the fungi convert it into stable carbon in the soil. Now in a wheat crop, for example, there are a million plants per hectare. We multiply that by 1.8 billion hectares of managed farmland across the world. And you're looking at an infrastructure that can facilitate the largest carbon drawdown event we've ever seen. A lot of people don't realise that soil carbon is the actual foundation for all soil health. It underpins every function in soil from its water holding capacity to its nutrient availability and its water infiltration. I've been trying to build carbon my whole career and it's been pretty much hit and miss. When we learn how to reliably influence this metric is when we will see massive gains made in our industry. As an agronomist, I obviously spend a lot of time working with farmers and you have to understand what makes their business tick. In simple terms, as with any business, you need to maximise yield and minimise risk. And having more carbon in the soil does both those things. So what we have to do is first go out and scour the landscape, really understand how the microbes are interacting, pick out that right cohort of microbes to work with. Then what we have to do is really understand how they thrive in a particular environment. Once we know that, we can then take these microbes and make sure that they're working within an agricultural system. So I guess when we're talking about what we're doing here, we could compare it to finding a needle in a haystack, but it's probably even more complex again. We started this as a not-for-profit research project, but to get to scale quickly, you need a commercial structure. So what we have now is this new model where both farmers and the environment are the biggest shareholders in the business represented by the Not-for-Profit Research Institute, and where future revenue will fund more research that will benefit them. The work we are doing is incredibly exciting. Previously, science was focused on plant breeding and genetics, but now we have started to get a better understanding of the microbial community that lives inside the plant. In humans, Microbes that live inside our body give us better health and nutrition. Similarly, in plants, there are microbes living within the plants that are giving beneficial property to the plants and the soil in which the plant is growing. With new technologies that allow us to study the entire microbial community that live in the soil, we are opening up a whole new frontier of science. The unique thing about these microbes is that they help plants take atmospheric CO2 and convert that into a really stable form of carbon in the soil. Now in a normal scenario, the plant starts to grow. It draws down CO2, and then when it dies or is harvested, it starts to release that carbon back into the atmosphere. Now with this technology, a farmer treats a seed with the fungi. The fungi forms a mutualistic relationship with that plant. Now as the plant and fungi are growing together, they're taking carbon and storing it in a really stable form in the soil. This process is turning what is a problem for everyone into an asset for farmers. It's really exciting to think that this could have such a huge impact on our environment and our food systems. To have access to a technology that makes it economical and easy for farmers to build carbon in soils and build yields, that is a very powerful tool for farmers. I haven't met a farmer who doesn't see themselves as a custodian of the land. Technologies like these can help us create healthier food systems while we're regenerating our soils, leaving the land in better condition for the next generation.